Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss advanced table level data validation tests in Oracle. Specifically, we're going to look at heuristic thresholds, data diff, and schema diff checks. Heuristic thresholds are an advanced table level data validation technique. There are two examples in this rule set. Example number one is null rates of a specified column. For example, verify column X is null less than 10% of the time. The second example is the frequency distributions of specific column values. For example, verify that column C has value red less than 10% of the time and value yellow greater than 40% of the time. So here we are at the GitHub page. You can see how to get there at the end of this video. We're at rule set number three, here's stick thresholds, and we're gonna look at the null rate threshold T008. You can come and expand this and read the details in the demo. I'm actually gonna walk through it. And this is the SQL that you can copy, paste, and execute on your own. So let's go look at this in Oracle SQL Developer. So here is the complete SQL for T008, the null rate. And what we're going to do is run the inner query SQL here. And basically, we're going to look at demo HR departments, and we're going to look at what's the null rate for department name, manager ID, and URL, three fields. And basically, we're saying, if department name is a null, sum a one, otherwise sum a zero. So it's going to count up all the nulls for each of the fields and then divide it by the count of the table in total. So let's go run that, see what we get. And there we go. We get the NR, null rate of the department name. That's this first row here. And it's zero. There's no nulls. And the null rate for manager ID, 59% null. Null rate for URL, 74% null. So you can see up here, we're going to trigger an alarm, rejection code one, if it's not completely nulls. If there's, if it's not 100% null or 0%, I'm sorry, if it's not 0% uh, nulls, it'll trigger rejection code. If this manager ID, which is 59%, exceeds 65%, 0.65, then we'll trigger an error, and so on. And you'll see the expected result is listed, and the actual result is the actual value uh, calculated up. So. Let's go ahead and run this, and we get a pass. Now, if I were to take this value and make it 16%, and make it 16% here, and run the inner SQL only, notice how we get a nice rejection code. The null rate is too high at manager ID. We expected 16%, but the actual is 59%. So that's why this test case is set up that way. But let's undo, undo, and run the whole thing the uh, common table expression with and the bottom down here and it's going to summarize everything for us and there we go so if there was a fail the details are here but this little wrapper is going to make it return only the value fail so that is a null rate and it's a single pass through a table you just copy paste the row over and over and over for every field that you want to add you, of course, change your schema and your table, change the field name, and then change the as. I just take this field name and prefix it with NR underscore and maybe shorten it. You can do whatever you want, but the inner SQL, build all those. And for every line down here that you add, make sure you add a corresponding line up here with some business logic that says, oh, the null rate has to be less than this, between this, greater than this, whatever. Whatever it is you're going to do with the null rate. Now, there is a downside to this particular type of test case. And I've run into it a lot over my career. And the downside is false alarms. When you say you have it set tight to like a 10% error or a 2% error, and over time more garbage starts coming in and more nulls, and then all of a sudden it starts triggering. And you talk to people to correct the data and they don't correct the data for whatever reason. Then you gotta bump it to 3%. And then a month goes by and you gotta bump it to 4%. And at that point, it kind of begs the question, why do you even have that test case? If you're going to keep bumping the threshold and no one's going to fix it, then you're wasting time having that test case. So this particular one, be careful, only write checks for fields that really are important. If the null rate is too high, too low, not within a certain range, if it really is important, go ahead and uh, write this query up. Another thing that I've done for data pipelines is I'll set aware clause and say, look at the last one day, look at the last two days, look at the last one hour. And what I'm looking for is some kind of change. And I want to see that, you know, every hour, every day, the null rate is usually 1% or 5% on this flow. 
but all of a sudden it spikes to 40%. You want to catch that quickly, so by putting in a rare clause filter down here and running it periodically for a smaller amount of time, then you can be more sensitive to changes. Whereas if you're running it for the entire data set and it has you know a 10% null rate, but you're just getting in a fraction of a percent new data, it's going to take you quite a while until you recognize that the null rate spiked up. So there's lots of nuances to using this particular test case. And it's a nice one to have in your toolbox, but be careful using it. Back at GitHub, here is test 009, value frequency thresholds. You can expand and read these details. I'll try and talk through them when we go switch over to Oracle SQL Developer and demo this particular script. This script is very similar to T008. You have your inner SQL. I'll show you what that does. And then a nested inner SQL and an outer SQL. And basically what we're doing is saying, hey, what's the frequency of this value, region ID 1? Is it not between 28 and 36%? throw a rejection error code because the data should always be at that percentage. I like to use this one in data flows when you have, you know, every hour a cross section of data should come through. 80% should be this type of data. 5% should be that type. 4% should be this type. And it's nice to run a check like this and just monitor what's going on. Here we are in SQL Developer for Oracle and at test 009 validation test for values. Let's just jump right in and run the inner SQL and see what's going on. It's easier to explain it that way. So rows one through four, region ID value one, two, four, three. What's the frequency? There's eight out of 25, five out of 25, six out of 25, six out of 25. So anyway, the inner just does counts for the group by on region ID. Then if we run this guy here, going to take the region ID and calculate the frequency rate for us. A little bit easier to see. Got rid of the numerators, denominators. And you, of course, can come in and change the schema, change the table name, change the field that you're analyzing, and then whatever the values are, numeric, text, doesn't matter. And your goal is to figure out what's the rate of this value for whatever my criteria is. Here, I don't have any work criteria. I'm looking at the entire table. But Frequently, I would want to filter it down to last hour, last day, last week, whatever, and monitor the pattern. And I know that the frequency stays within a range. So in this case, I, in the outer query here, I know that region ID is 1 between 28 and 36% of the time. Now well, it's 32. But if I know that it's always, I can narrow the band and set up a uh, rejection alert that says, hey, it's outside of the threshold. So a very handy test case. Let's run this. And we're going to get pass, 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 pass for each of the values. And if it failed, you know, if region three failed, we would know region three failed and we'd have details. Expected the range to be this. Actual frequency was that. This is just the row number. The actual value is listed over here. Region ID one, two, three, four. And I could, if it was text value, I'd put the text value in, whatever. You get all the details you need to go troubleshoot if there's a failure. But... For purposes of this particular script, I just want to run all of this and return a pass or a fail. I don't want all these details. I want the details buried. So there we go. I get a pass. Diff checks are another advanced table level data validation technique. There are three validation test examples in this rule set. Here we are in GitHub, rule set number eight, diff checks. And we're going to start off with test 59, the table structure and schema differences. I'm going to expand this here. You can read through these four bullets on your own, a lot of detail of what's going on. And then here's all the SQL. And in a nutshell, the table structure is right here in this little SQL statement. We have it captured statically. Ordinal position one is the field location ID column name. Its data type is number numeric four, number four, and it's not null. So those are the schema elements that we're capturing. Ordinal position, column name, data type, and whether or not it's nullable. You could add more, but those are generally enough if you're trying to track whether or not a table has changed in dev tester stage or even prod. So there's your, sta your static copy. And then this is a whole bunch of code that you never have to change. And it just runs. You, you do change what's the uh, schema. Actually, that should be demo HR. And what's the table name? But the rest of it is dynamic. So that gets our actual schema. This is our static expected schema, expected actual. And then we have our data under test where we run a comparison. We join on the column names. And we check if all the properties are the same. And then we dump out the results. So let's go over to Oracle and run it. 
So here we are, Oracle SQL Developer, Test Case 59. There's a lot going on. So let's start with the expected subquery. Let's just highlight and run that and give you a visual. And so here's our expected table. The ordinal position, the column name, the data type, and whether or not it's nullable. So this is static, hard-coded in our SQL test case, our expected results. Here is our actual. And the only thing you're ever going to... So the expected, you'll change to whatever you need to uh, change it to. You'll change the ordinal positions, add or remove rows, change call name, change data type, and change whether or not it's null or not null. And just follow the layout here. Um, or you could just come down here and run the actual. So here is the actual that's going to go out to the Oracle Systems table, all tab columns, etc. And it's going to look at the schema or the user demo underscore HR and the table name locations. So let's run that actual. And look at that. The actual that it's pulling is going to match up nicely with our expected. I, when I write a test case, I go run this after changing these two fields, get whatever the table is going to be, and then I translate this up into here. That's how I create my expected. And then this will run every day for me, and it'll tell me when someone's changed the schema. I prefer to break them down into separate test cases so I get the nice granular fail or pass by table. Anyway, that's our expected. That's our actual. And our data under test, we can't really run this one uh, separately individually, but the data under test is going to go in and say, hey, take expected, left join to actual, if the actual column is null, that means that the actual is missing a column that we expect. So that'll trigger an error. Uh, you could do a full outer join and check both ways. If there's an extra actual column, I didn't do that. So that's one gap in here. It could be fixed or you could do a right join. Anyway, um, I kept it simple for this one. And the expected is my gold master. And if a column's missing, I'll catch it. And then if a column has a different name, I'll catch that as well or the ordinal position is different, or the data type is different, or it's nullable on one, not nullable on the other. So that's what this does, is checks those properties. And I know it's not that sophisticated of a schema check, but column name, data type, those are the nullable, not nullable, those are the common uh, components. And I have another video on doing a more comprehensive schema diff, a little bit more, prop fewer, uh, more properties, as well as keys. So you could look at that and incorporate some of that into here as well. Um, let's go ahead and run the whole enchilada from here up to here and see what we get. We should get a pass. And we do. And just to prove that it works, let's go up to our expected and let's just uh, throw an X in there on location ID and let's see what happens. Fail. Got our failure. So that's a real nice handy test case to know if your schema changed. Back at GitHub, looking at test case 60, validation check, table data differences from a static snapshot. You can expand that, read the details, go copy the SQL. Let's just jump over to SQL Developer, and we'll run through what's going on here. So test case 60 is good for checking the data of smaller reference table. Maybe here's four rows, but I could have 20 or 30 rows. And what we're going to do, here's our expected results. Let's go run that and look at what we have. So our expected result is column region ID and region name. And so we expect the table contents to look just like this. And so we have a union, union all, whatever, here. And that's our metadata, expected results. And then our data under test, we're actually joining the target table, our actual. The metadata is expected, left joining to our actual, and then checking for differences. Um, I can't because I, the way I have this, I can't just run this, but I'll run the whole thing and you'll see it pass. And basically it's gonna compare that table to what's expected and fire off with any differences and it's gonna get a pass. Now, if I went in here to Asia and put an X in the name and then run it, it's gonna get a fail and it does. And just to prove to you that this works, I went to the advanced script. There's a lot more going on here, but Asia, I changed it to Asia X, and then I'm going to run the whole big script here in a different video. We'll see what that's doing. Okay, it ran. I'm going to jump down to the end, and there's some cleanup stuff I have to do. It took me a few seconds there. So I'm going to run this one, Boop. and then I'm going to run the results. And you're going to see 
that indeed in the advanced script, status fail, test 60, test description was that particular test case. And then the important stuff is over here. The execution time was eight seconds. It wasn't really, it just took me that long to scroll down and run it. It was run on this date and time. And then here we go, here's the good parts. Rejection details, region name, rejection two, region name doesn't exist. And it expected Asia X, because I put in that bogus value, but the actual value was Asia. And it gives me the lookup sequel. So the advanced script gives you all kinds of troubleshooting information. And back to GitHub for data validation test 61. Very similar to test 60, but test 60, we embedded the SQL static snapshot of what the data should look like. In test 61, we're actually doing a dynamic compare. So I won't describe this, but you can expand it, read the details, copy. Let's go to SQL Developer and look at how it works. Here we are at test case 61. Let's deconstruct and see what's going on. So let's select the values from our primary table, our target table, the jobs table has a table name and then what the fields are. So let's just run that, see what we have. Okay, so we have what, a uh, whole bunch of different rows in there and different values. So I've hard coded the table name jobs. I have a table name and then job ID, job title, all this stuff you would change if you were gonna configure this for your own purposes, you would change the schema, change it to the table name, and add or remove uh, field names. And then this one you would leave, you just change the name. So there we go. There's the actual table values. And then our expected come from this snapshot or shadow table. So at some point I took uh, the jobs table and said create table job snapshot as select star from jobs. And this is my static baseline that I'm going to compare against over time with all the data in it. So let's run that and it looks very similar. The job snapshot table name is different, but all of these columns here are the same. And so we have those two columns and we're going to union all. So check this out. It's a pretty neat trick. A guy named Henry at my work, that's where I learned it from. He did it. So you can see if I sort it by job ID, so you can see job, job snapshot, job, job snapshot. So there's always going to be two columns and all the values the same. This is all mock data. It doesn't mean anything. But uh, you can see what we're going to do. We're going to ignore the table name, but we're going to group by all of these columns, and we better get a count of two when we group by all of them. And so that's what we're doing. So let's run this. We're not going to have the having count, but we're going to run it. And now we have half as many rows. Don't worry about the table name. It just took the maximum one. It doesn't matter. Um, but there we go. Boom, 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 boom. Two, two, two. We have two rows with the same job ID, same job title. All four columns are the same. Now, if we had any match count found of one, that would be a problem. That would be a mismatch. We would want to know that. And so that's what's going on here. We add the having clause in, run it, and we get nothing. And that, getting nothing, gives us a pass. That's what the rest of the SQL is doing. So there we go, we have a pass. So if you want to reuse this, that code doesn't change. This code here is going to change because what you're doing is saying, you know, that's fine, the rejection. The table name is fine, but all of these fields are going to be specific to whatever table is under test. And if it's numeric, you're going to have to cast it, etc. So you'll have to change this. You'll have to change in here, your table name and your shadow or snapshot table name baseline, and you're gonna have to change all of these fields that you're selecting and grouping on, grouping by. So you change all that stuff, and then up here, you're gonna have the same thing. So anyway, very powerful technique. But the guts of it is take a table, take a shadow copy table, union them together, union all of them together, and then group by all the fields. And you're having can except for the artificial name that you have, which is a handle. Know which if there's if the having count is one, you want to know which table it is, and that's why this is done. But anyway, it's a really nice technique for giant tables to diff them. To download the SQL scripts in this video, open a browser. In the URL, go to www.github.com slash data research labs, all one word. When it pops up, click the SQL scripts link filter to find it, and scroll down till you see the data validation scripts in the markdown language. Click it, and scroll down 
Now, I don't have the green plum links built or the SQL server, and I don't have the videos built. They will be. It's just going to take time. But for our purposes here, let's go to Oracle. Let's look at, sure, let's look at the uh, diff checks. Right click, open in a new tab. And in this case, all the details are collapsed. So expand it. Big bunch of SQL that's going to schema diff and tell you source to target, whether the structure's changed. And you can hover over this little clipboard, click that, and voila, you've copied it. And if I were to go over and open up a notepad and paste that in, there it is. There's all the SQL properly formatted. So that is how you open up and use the SQL scripts from this video and all the rest of the videos. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.